Hello Simmers, this is your captain speaking and we are doing a live video today on NIMBY Rails. This is the second in a multi-part series uh, on looking at NIMBY Rails from the viewpoint of a uh, new user. Uh, so these are startup videos. Uh, we won't be getting into a great deal of depth in any of these videos, but we will try to cover the basics as thoroughly as possible. And that kind of sounds like a contradiction, and uh, in, a, in a way that it is, but um, hopefully it will be uh, helpful to one another. When I started using uh, NIMBY Rails, there were a lot of things in the program that were just... Um, uh, really went over my head and it took a, lot, a while for me to uh, know it well enough that I was able to go in and and uh, uh, test certain of the systems uh, to come to a better understanding of how they work and hopefully uh, I'll be able to help some new users uh, avoid that situation in their own use of the program. Uh, in our last video, we looked at the startup menu that you see. Well, I guess you don't see it here yet. Let's uh, get over there. In our last video, we looked at the startup menu of uh, NIMBY Rails, and we covered each one of these options in uh, uh, pretty good detail, so we don't have a lot to say about that anymore. Uh, today we're going to go in and uh, we'll start a new game for this video and uh, we'll just go ahead and select the company name that it has given to us. Uh, the, uh, we talked a little bit last week about what unlimited money was about, so I don't need to cover that again, and unrestricted coupling. Uh, we also talked about what the mods were and uh, decided for our uh, for purposes of these videos, we'll just go with the built-in mods and won't have to do anything there. So we'll go straight on into the game. And the first thing that we'll see when you come into NIMBY uh, uh, Rails is a map. Uh, this is kind of zoomed in a bit more than what uh, you would normally see the very first time. The first time you come into NIMBY Rails, you'll see uh, a map of the full globe, something like this. And you'll see these uh, three uh, boxes up here at the top of the screen. We talked a little bit about uh, this uh, toolbar here. And briefly, we looked at this toolbar and especially this button that opens up uh, an in-game menu uh, where you can go and quit the game or quit the uh, to the desktop, stop the game altogether. And uh, I showed you that so that you could uh, get out of the program easily. Uh, you probably already found that, but just in case someone was wondering how to get out, then that's how you do that. Uh, we're going to give more. Uh, we're going to give more emphasis to this toolbar uh, in another video. We won't be looking at it very much uh, this video at all. Uh, this toolbar or uh, information uh, box, uh, we probably will look at a little bit today. But you can see already that it tells you how much money you have and uh, the time of day. Uh, you can see that it's ticking by uh, one second per second already. And we've already uh, gone about four minutes in this particular world. You click the, the uh, uh, minus button. And that puts us into a pause mode where time is not passing by within this world. Uh, in the last video, we looked at the tracks button. And we started looking at the building of tracks in uh, the uh, video and, and played around with that a little bit. 
but uh, I think it would be a good idea for us just to start uh, fresh with uh, the uh, building menu, this building toolbar at the top. And uh, today we're going to give um, a better look at the tracks uh, button, tracks builder. Uh, and then probably in our next video, I plan to look at the lines and trains uh, buttons. And while we are looking at these tracks, lines, and trains, we'll talk more about the, uh, uh, the financial situation with, uh, within the game, how the finances work. And then uh, finally, we'll look at this uh, toolbar and all of its features in a uh, video of its own. Okay, so under the tracks uh, button, you'll see uh, these uh, boxes. Uh, the top box here is a box for the management of your clipboard, and you can uh, you can create uh, collections of clipboards uh, in uh, in your game and the the contents of these collections would be things that you have clipped off of the uh, screen uh, while uh, working in, at building some other things. I have one here that I started a while ago called the Houston uh, clipboard and if I click over here where it says show saved clipboard clips that dialog box expands and you can see the uh, things that I have uh, copied into the clipboard. Uh, I don't know that there's very much use for any of these things. I'm just playing around trying to learn how to use it. But uh, I have uh, several different things here. Uh, most of them are uh, stations that I have built. Uh, various types of stations that differ somewhat from the uh, default station that uh, that you get within NIMBY Rails. Click that button again and that uh, clipboard uh, closes. And then down here you'll see the global blueprint bill and this uh, tells you how much things are going to cost. As you go into your program and you start building things then NIMBY Rails is going to calculate how much those things cost. Now, there's no expense yet in, uh, in doing these things because you're in uh, Blueprint mode. And blueprint mode allows you to make plans for where your tracks and your stations are going to go. And the, the bill does not come due until you build all of the blueprints or the blueprints that you have selected and then whatever the cost of those tracks and stations and so on the cost will be deducted from the amount of money that you start off with so that's what the uh, global blue blueprint bill is and you see those when the uh, well you see these these under uh, at various times when these buttons are pressed and you just have to kind of get used to uh, what, what dialog boxes show up here when the buttons are pressed. And we'll get more familiar with that as we go on. Uh, another thing that you can see here uh, is that if you have built uh, tracks and you've got some lines and trains running, you could click on a train, for example, and an info box will pop up and give you some information about that train. This second button here is to append tracks or to create new ones and uh, by default it has the key binding of N. So you could click N to, to uh, get into this mode or just click the button. Uh, the uh, To create a new track you would go into here you select the type of track you want to, want, uh, to build and 
you come down into the uh, map, get close enough into the map where you can see what you're doing with uh, with the uh, 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 with it with the toolbar and you come in here and you'll click one end and you'll pull the mouse uh, until uh, the track segment segment is about as long as you want it to be and then you click the other end now uh, because we are in the append mode we automatically go to the next track and start to build it and click again and that builds that section and that keeps on going until you press the escape key like that which uh, eliminates uh, the last track that you pull out or uh, if you come to another section of track and show you how that works we'll just uh, put a bit of track right here and uh, escape out of there and now we'll start another track right here where this track is at and now if we come to this point control point and click on that then that will also take you out of the append mode and uh, you'll have the track that you have uh, that you've created now notice uh, when you are in the append tracks or create new tracks mode you have several new icons down here and these icons set up the uh, mode that you're in as you're building tracks uh, this is the double track mode you can see here that the tracks that we built are uh, there are two tracks that are parallel with one another and that's because we went into the double track mode. Now I'm for for now I'm going to deselect that and uh, the next track that I build will be just a single track. Uh, this is the continuously append track segments and press until pressing escape or merging merging linking the track mode. <laughs> and this is uh, uh, this is what causes that continuous continuously append to happen. If that is deselected and you build a track like we did before and then click enter, that's it. In order to start a new track, you would uh, click on that and you keep pulling and you click enter or click the uh, left mouse button and it stops again. And that's the way this program worked up until version 1.8. And with 1.8, they added uh, this mode to the uh, track building, which is a lot more convenient. If you're trying to lay a track between Chicago and Dallas, uh, that's going to take a lot of mouse clicking to put each of these segments in there. And by, uh, by adding this mode to the, uh, uh, to the mix, uh, they saved half of the clicking that would be necessary for that procedure. This button is the start or merge branches while uh, pointing on top of existing tracks. So if you have a track here and you want to merge off of it, you can just uh, point on top of this, click the button, and a new track will start and you can merge off of that track. Similarly, if you're not on the track and you, you're, you've got a, a track that you're building right here and you want to merge onto that track, you can just hover over that track like that, click the button, and that will uh, uh, merge a new uh, uh, track onto the old track there. So you can go either way. Uh, really, if you are uh, building tracks and trying to do these kinds of merge, the best thing to do is to uh, start here with uh, on the track itself, pull off a little bit, click here, for example, 
where you want to uh, you want the track to kind of run in the middle then on the other side start here with the track come down like that and now pull a track between them and that way you've got a nice looking uh, merge between these two tracks uh, it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to go like this to put a track there and just go directly over to the track sometimes it just doesn't look quite right and you can see how well this one turned off but this doesn't even look like it's uh, merged at all in fact I don't think it is uh, for some reason and if uh, and for some reason I cannot make it merge uh, the, the white underneath it I think means there is some kind of problem uh, with it and which would suggest that this one is is bad too but it looks like it merged uh, correctly onto on to that so I'm not sure exactly how you uh, uh, get these to work but if you have a control button like that that means it didn't merge for whatever reason and so we'll just uh, get rid of all that all right so let me uh, scroll out here go out to our edit uh, mode select everything we've got there and pull it off so uh, now let's take a look at these dialog boxes we still have the global blueprint bill uh, going there and uh, here are the ki different kinds of tracks that you can build and currently if you click this button you'll see all the different kinds of tracks that are available within the game right now uh, there are high speed tracks medium speed tracks and trams trams are have a maximum speed of 60 kilometers per hour and a medium speed track has a maximum speed of 160 kilometers per hour a high speed track has a 350 kilometers per hour maximum speed uh, and the purpose for this is so that you can take these and come over here and you can add uh, the different kinds of tracks that you're interested in up into these uh, uh, slots which are kind of a these slots are here to express your favorite kinds of tracks and right now I have a high speed track that is uh, two levels high above the ground uh, a high speed track that is on the ground and a tram that is on the ground and then a high speed track that is underground at a depth of uh, minus two here is a medium speed track that is uh, at a height of two above the ground a medium speed uh, track that is on the ground and a medium speed track that is under the ground and uh, those are about all of the different kinds of tracks I could think I, I would use uh, during most games uh, I believe you can add additional kinds of tracks you can go out to uh, the server and download tracks and add those and you can have tracks for buses and tracks for water vehicles and, and things of that nature uh, I just have, have not done that uh, so far but these are the kinds of tracks and then this toolbar up here is to set the level of the track uh, and so you could select the high speed here uh, right now we're got a that's a high speed track on the ground the maximum speed of 350 kilometers per hour and we even have the price uh, it's five hundred thousand dollars per kilometer and uh, you can go up here then and change the level you can change this from ground to plus one which changes the track into a viaduct 
or you can change it to plus two and change it to plus three. And uh, I don't have a plus three, so it's not favored at all. Or change it to unlimited height. Uh, and the unlimited height, uh, you can just lay the track anywhere you want to uh, above ground, and uh, the program will take care of the height for you, and there'll be no interference. So if we were to build a viaduct right here, uh, with that particular uh, button, and we crossed uh, the viaduct with another viaduct. We go in and look. Uh, these viaducts are at different levels from one another. So uh, even though you see them there, they don't they don't interfere with one another. One is over the top of the other, uh, and so uh, there's no chance of uh, running into a, a, a train in that way. If, on the other hand, uh, you were on the ground and tried to do the same thing, we'll just build another track right here on the ground and uh, try to cross it, something interesting is going to happen. And we go in and look here, and now we've got we've got a uh, uh, interference between these tracks. They don't join one another, but they cross one another. And uh, it's possible that uh, you could have one train going down this track, another train going down this track, and uh, you could have a collision as uh, a result of that. So that's the purpose of these uh, uh, levels and so on. Notice that every time you change the uh, uh, track type or the track height, it's going to change the price. So we're at high speed on the ground, $500,000 uh, per kilometer. We go one up, it goes to 3300000 And uh, then the others going up, uh, they're also 3300000 if you go down, we've got four million dollars for this tunnel, uh, and four million dollars for all the other tunnels. So it's a little more expensive. The tunnel is a little more expensive than uh, than the ground or the uh, bridge. All right, clear all that off again. Let's see. Uh, is there anything else that we want to uh, see on this section? Well, uh, not at this point. I think I think we're all right. The next button is the split and tape tools. And I should have left my my uh, track up there. Let me build a few tracks uh, before we get there. Uh, and we'll just start right there with that one track. We'll go over here to the split and tape tools. And the purpose for the split and tape tools is to create segments out of track that you've already uh, created. Uh, this works only on blueprint tracks, not on built tracks. Uh, if you have a build track, then it needs to be uh, it needs to be uh, demoted to a blueprint track and then you can use these tools on it again. So uh, let's see, let's let's first of all take a look and see what, what this track looks like. If we just take a look at this single track, it's not a double track, just a single track, it has two control points and if you move the control points then the track will follow along with the uh, with the control point. The same thing is true here. So on each end there are, there's a control point. And there is a track point right here. And that's kind of an odd uh, little uh, thing here. And makes you wonder what, what in the world is that. And uh, this will make more sense as we start to put tracks together. But uh, you can move this track point 
toward the control points uh, as much as you like. And uh, what this will accomplish when you do, it will change the way uh, tracks curve when curvature is added to a track. Let's go ahead and add another uh, track to this one, another segment. You can see that uh, I'm already now able to produce a curve. Let's uh, just put our control point right there. And you'll see in this button, this uh, gray button is where uh, two tracks have been joined together. And there's, uh, and the curvature that exists is between this track point and that track point. That's, uh, and it's curved in such a way that the radius here is the same as the radius of around here. Uh, the, and the distance from here to here is the same as here to here. So the, uh, basically what, well, let me, let me just move this so you can see exactly what happened. Now you can see that that's a, a control point, by the way, uh, by, the, by the shape. And you can change this again, just like we did before. It makes more of a curvature. But notice where the curve goes from here to the tangent between the curve and uh, the other rail. And the curvature is, has to fit between these track points. So if I move the track point outside of the circle that has been drawn there for uh, uh, purposes of, of, uh, of drafting, if I move it in within, the, the circle gets smaller, and this arc gets tighter. And you can see now that the arc goes from this track point to this uh, tangent point, the, the, uh, where the tangent uh, connects the circle to the rail over on this side. So whichever one, whichever one of these is closer to this point is the one that defines the radius of the circle. Now the radius here, we have a circle that has a radius of 183 meters because this is the defining track point. But if we move this one down, we can change the radius to whatever we want the radius to be. We can make it tight or as loose as this one will allow. You see how that works. And so you see a length here of 236 meters. That's the length from this control point to the track point that I'm, uh, that I'm moving. All right. And if we come up here and look, then there is another length, which is the length from this one to the track point. And so uh, those lengths uh, will give you a sense of how long this piece of track is. Uh, but you might have to add up uh, these numbers to get that uh, to get that information. But that's that's how these tracks uh, basically work together. And now that let's take a look at the tape and the, the split and tape tool. Uh, when we click the split and tape tools button, we get a bunch of new buttons down here. Uh, we have the split tracks button. We have the tape, the track tape button. We have promote tracks into station platforms. Then there is the building tape button and the parallel tape, uh, track, parallel track tape button. And all of those have a, uh, uh, a usage for helping to build tracks and putting things together. Let's take a look at each one of them. First of all, 
Uh, the split tracks button may be the one that you use the most. If you get out there and you've, you've built a track, maybe uh, to save time, you've built a real, real long uh, track. Let's just go here and we'll come over here and we'll build a, we'll build a track here that's really longer than it ought to be. See if we can do this here. And we build a track that is, uh, now this is uh, uh, 2,700, let's make it uh, three kilometers long, okay? And we say, well, wait a minute, that's, uh, that's a lot of track. And uh, there's no way that we could have a track go through this area. We want it to go. We want it to curve through the uh, uh, this section of the town, and we don't want it to go through the neighborhood. So how how can we curve that? Well, at this point, that is uh, straight, and uh, there's the only thing that we can do is move the control points like this. So if we want to curve want to curve in there, we have to go in and split the track in some place. So with the split tool, come in here and we can click on where we want to split the uh, track tool. I'm not sure, I don't think I split it actually. Let's just say we want the track tool to split right there. Maybe, oh, we did split it. Okay, I didn't see that. All right, and now, oh, let's see. Well, I thought I knew what I was doing, but okay, here we go. Uh, there's a control point. I knew that I had control points here, but somehow I uh, fouled up. Let's just go back. Okay, now we got that long one again. I'm going to come here and click split. And I'm going to put a split right there. So now I've got a control point. And notice, in this occasion, the track points are so close to the control point that if I move that control point up where we wanted it to go, that's going to be almost that's going to be almost an, a direct angle right there. There's no curvature at all, hardly. And so, we can come here now and grab that track our uh, track bar uh, button and we can pull this out as far as we want to notice watch the uh, uh, speed limit here the maximum speed limit the farther we pull this out the more that that speed limit can come up and so now we have we have the curvature in there that we were interested in. I'm going to just uh, delete this. And now we have the curvature that we want in that track. So that's how the split bar button works. Well, what about the tape? Uh, but let's go and take a look at track tape. And this is one that uh, uh, kind of surprised me a bit when I saw it. And I'm not sure if I know how to use it yet, but uh, I do know some of what it does. With the split, with the track tape bar, instead of pointing at a specific spot that you want to, where you want the split to occur, you take your mouse and you point at one point in the track and then start to drag along the track. And you'll notice now that there is a, uh, 
there is a gray line going inside uh, that describes where the mouse has been. When I get where I want to be, I can click it again and now see what happened. I've got uh, new sections created and instead of only a control point here where it was before, now I've got a control point here and a control point here. And it seems like to me that what the uh, track tape tool is doing is it's just uh, it's doing the same thing that the split uh, button does except that you do it in two places and uh, uh, so I'm a little I'm a little uh, confused about how uh, why it's even called a, a track tool or why it's even useful because you could do the same thing just by doing uh, using the split button twice on the uh, uh, on on the, the the rail here so anyway that's uh, how the how that button works uh, you can promote tracks into station platforms and uh, this does what you would expect it to do if you just press the button there you come in here and you look at a track and this uh, track let's just click on that one invalid length it says too too long for station all right so we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to change some things here so let's uh, let's change our track length some see if we can make a more reasonable track length and come back and promote tracks to station platforms now this is going to be 539 meters so that's valid we click OK and it now says South Chicago Post Office now we've got we've got a track uh, a platform there uh, even though it says the, the uh, geometry uh, is uh, invalid I might have to go in there and uh, make some more changes to make this work uh, the way you would expect it to but um, so but you can see now that I've got uh, I've got a section of track now that is basically a um, a platform for passengers to get on and off the screen, on and off the train. And uh, there may be there may be uh, uh, some problems with it. I'm not sure exactly why it's geometry is invalid uh, you see these things sometimes within the game and sometimes you can ignore them I think but uh, might be something you want to look into but if you just come off it it looks looks okay maybe it's invalid because it's already a platform and I'm trying to uh, promote something to a platform that may be what the reason you see that I don't know all right let's look at the next uh, this is building tape and the purpose of building tape is to uh, is to uh, create a, a building material around a track and so let's just uh, let's just do some building around this track right here uh, right now we have of various types of material that we can use. Let's go in and choose uh, awning and we'll just click and drag and click and now we have uh, we have awning there 
I'm going to uh, select that and try to change it into some other types of, of material that look a little bit better than the awning. But uh, glass tile, uh, that's awning. That's something you can see through. Let's go over here and take a look at some other things. Here's a glass deco tile. Let's try that one right there, okay? All right, so now we have nice uh, uh, awning. Uh, nice uh, uh, cover for our track right here. And so uh, basically the purpose of this is you can dress up a, a platform and make it look nice uh, so that your platform is uh, distinctive with one another. Um, the dimensions, you can come over here and take a look at the building properties. Uh, right now this is under the track, so the track... Uh, is not obscured by it. If we come over here and we put it, at, make it as a roof, now the track goes underneath it. And you can see the track underneath it because the glass tile is translucent and you can see through the glass drop uh, tile there. Uh, nevertheless, it would keep the rain off the uh, passengers as they're uh, loading or disembarking from the train. All right, uh, so that is the that is the uh, building tape. And then the last thing here on this, this, uh, these extra toolbars is the parallel track tape. And uh, uh, this one is interesting. If uh, with the parallel track tape, you come in, you set, you click the button, you click on a track that you want to set as parallel, and you can move it to below the track or above the track, left or right, if it's going up and down, and then click the button. And, well, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, I guess. So let's try this again. Click, click. No, nope. click, click. Okay. All righty. Oh, there's. Okay. Uh, yes, I've uh, I remember now what you've got to. It's very strange the way this works. In order to, in order to build a track, uh, you've got to click on both ends of the track. So you have to find the uh, track uh, you have to find this track uh, control and you click on the left of it and you click on the right and that will create a new one I'm going to remove that one click on the left make sure that my track is on the top of it come over here click on the right and now, get another parallel track. You can do that again, or do it as many times as you want to, and get as many of those parallel tracks running together as you like. And uh, the uh, reason this is not curving the way uh, this one is is because it's not it's not uh, uh, connected to any other parallel track here that would pull it along with the other. So that's how to use the uh, split and tape tools button. Let's go now and take a look at the create stations button. But first I'm going to clean up my uh, I'm going to clean up uh, what I have the mess I've made up here. Ah, let's see, and okay, I think that I must have something selected here that has caused me that to uh, come up, but we'll see if we can't select all of this and delete it. Did that get it all? Yes. 
Okay, now let's go back to create stations. And this is a quick way to create a station uh, along your route. And you are usually, well, not usually, you always want to create your stations before you run your tracks to the station. And I'll tell you why that's the case uh, as we do this. Let's select uh, a high-speed ground track, create station, and we're going to put the station right here. We'll pull it along. We'll make the station 372 meters long. And uh, this station is just a single line. That's okay. But uh, that is our station. It's automatically given a name, South Chicago Post Office. Come back here and click it, and we get the station properties. Uh, you can... Uh, Click, uh, click this refresh button and it will go through a number of different names that might be more uh, suitable for your purposes. Or you can click this button and type in a name of your own choosing. Uh, you can uh, modify the way the uh, name looks on the screen. This is the full uh, setting. You can just put it name and packs or name and passengers just show the name only just show the icon only or just show a dot and we'll just put name and passenger there that's nice uh, information to know you'll notice here that there is a circle that's drawn around the station and this is the area of influence that um, this station has uh, and it will draw its passengers from the passengers who live within this circle. If you look here there's 16,140 uh, uh, people that live in this area. Those That's your potential customer base in this uh, particular circle. Uh, it will cost uh, this uh, this uh, station will cost two million forty eight thousand three hundred twenty six dollars to build and get some information about uh, the cost of it there. Uh, and this is how much uh, has been, uh, how much will be, how it will cost to build all the blueprints, things that have been uh, designed so far. But anyway, we have the station here. And now we want to add tracks to it. And we add tracks to it just the same way that we would add to any other track. All right, so that's the station. Uh, let's uh, let's look at this a little more closely now. With the station, the station is made up of several things. It has the the name. It has platforms. This one has two platforms. Uh, one platform is uh, this platform here, which is uh, uh, one west. This one is one east, and so there's two platforms. Uh, it has building material around it. You can make modification of that building material if you wish. Uh, down here with the create with the create new buildings uh, block, or come up here and select the various components that you are interested in. Let's uh, change that for uh, this glass deco frame and do that for all of the rooftop structures. See how that changes the look. 
right there we go we've got the glass deco frame and so if we had any customers you'd be able to see the customers milling about within the uh, on the platform of course uh, customers are not simulated in that way so you really wouldn't be able to see them all right and uh, so that is the build uh, build stations or create stations uh, utility the build new buildings uh, this is for more aesthetic reasons than otherwise but uh, you might want to use these if you do any of the if you promote a uh, video to uh, or if you promote a uh, a, a, a rail track to to a platform you might want to build some buildings around it and this is the uh, uh, button that you would use to to do that um, it takes some getting used to so uh, just go in here and select one of the uh, uh, one of the surfaces click and drag click and then drag the mouse and click again to create a new surface uh, you want to change its shape you have to come up here and edit and then you can change the shape or the uh, the size and the shape of the tile that you've uh, moved uh, your uh, uh, tape tool may come in handy with this with uh, uh, we talked about uh, building tape that tapes uh, building to uh, uh, to a, a track uh, so you might want to try using that some but this would be like if you just wanted to, to build something near a track uh, for aesthetical purposes and this is the where you would go uh, to do that now there is uh, two more tools in the toolbox and we'll just try to cover those uh, briefly and uh, before we wrap up here uh, we go to move delete and edit signals and or click here to say create new signals you can create new signals and you get the various types of signals that are available down here below it if you click here then you're only able to, to edit the signals that are already drawn uh, within the blueprints of of your uh, the map so far let's go up here and select I'm sorry went to the wrong one select this and we're going to come back to build tracks and we're going to build uh, a track here and we want to put a junction right there and uh, build some more track right along there and a little bit more will come down here so now we have uh, Uh, some interesting track uh, this is uh, where a track merges on both of these in these parallel lines this is just a crossing here but there is a chance that you could have uh, uh, an accident here where trains could collide without proper signaling let's take a look at the signal buttons we'll click here and let's look at the various types of signals we have signals for one way uh, these signals are uh, set up to uh, show the direction of travel that's allowed on a particular line and uh, if you uh, hover over a, uh, a 
a uh, railway and is pointing the wrong direction, just click the shift button that will flip it. And then once you're satisfied with the way it looks, just click the uh, mouse button, the left mouse button, and that puts the uh, one way signal there. So in the US, trains travel, uh, I mean, the trains travel on the right. Uh, and uh, like we do with our automobiles. So we'll set up our one-way signals. The way they ought to be. And so uh, that's that on, the only thing that does is tell a train what is allowed for, uh, for it to go. Uh, the path signal is a signal that tells a train that a path is clear. And uh, we'll put a path signal here. Needs to point to in the right direction. We'll put a path signal here. A path signal here. That's wrong. I don't know why. So we'll put a path signal there and a path signal there. No, we don't need a path signal there. Let's go in. Um, let's go and delete that. So we've got the path signals. And what this uh, signal says is it tells a train if it can go, or it'll be red if uh, if there's congestion here or possible congestion. And uh, if a train comes and gets to this point first and intends to go there, then this uh, signal will tell a train coming in this direction to stop and wait for it. And so it wouldn't go any further. And uh, usually the way this works is that uh, once the train gets through here and passes the last signal on this, the next signal, then that clears the uh, way of the tracks so that this can turn yellow and allow the train to go. We would need another signal here. And that, that uh, will uh, give us uh, indication or give us uh, information about whether this area is congested with a train coming down here. It would not, or it shouldn't, uh, turn red for a train going this way because there's no way that they can interfere with one another here. But if a train is going this way, and this is planning to go this way down here, then there is a possible conflict there, and the train would need to stop. All right, this uh, block Belize believes. Uh, basically the way this is used is simply to say where the end of a block uh, is at and usually they would go beside uh, these signals and it says all right we're at the end of the block trains pass you can clear things off now. All right then this uh, no way button is to tell a train that uh, you don't want to go any further than this. So we'll put them right there. Do the same thing down here. Don't want to go any further than that. And then we have one more signal and that is the platform train stop point. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to put it on something like this, but if you had a platform right here, and you wanted the front of the train to stop right there when it was coming down to uh, unload passengers, you just put that stop there and that's where the train uh, would try to stop. That's the purpose of the platform uh, stop point. Well, I think we have covered enough uh, in this video. In our next video, uh, probably sometime this weekend, so please uh, uh, stay tuned.
we'll look at the lines and trains. You have to have lines and trains in order to have a railway system. And so uh, I will build out uh, a simple rail system here in Chicago for our next uh, video. And then we'll start putting some lines and trains uh, on the, uh, the rail system here. So I appreciate your coming to uh, Yoder's videos and hope that this has been some use to you uh, in your uh, use of NIMBY rails. Uh, be sure to come back. We'll see you next time.